First, allow me to say good afternoon to everybody, to our friends in the media and the press. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, and I have to say a special thank you to our coach, uh, the senior management, and my fellow Mamelodi Sundowns colleagues and staff. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, coach Mangoba unfortunately can't be here today. He sends his apologies. He's not feeling too well. And so we just wanted to take a precaution and make sure that uh, he gets tested before he comes. Since the club's earliest days under the ownership of Dr. Itzweng and Dr. Sebutsane, Mamelodi Sundowns has always placed a valuable importance on harnessing young talent. As the story goes, in the club's formative years, in an order to attract players to our football team, the doctors assembled their first team by recruiting young teenagers from Mamelodi High and neighboring schools and paid them by offering to buy them school books and school shoes in order to play for our now famous club. And that was how things were done in terms of the transfer market back in those days. Years later, Joel Fire Masilela and Daniel Mambush Mudao became examples of youngsters who were given a chance to prove themselves at the club and would eventually turn out to become club legends. Our history is full of examples of young men who tried their trade at the club and played with passion only to become Mamelodi Sundowns <coughs> legends and represent our badge with pride. And although much has changed in the 52 years of the club's existence, the importance of creating structures for the youth and identifying top talent is something that we hold very dear and it is an important piece of our DNA. As we continue to strive to become a dominant club on the African continent, it is important that the academy structures and youth teams embrace the same mentality as our first team and have an effective blueprint to ensure that they can follow the right path and apply the right practices in order to succeed at the highest levels. Today it is my great pleasure to announce to you all a man who will be tasked with the role of connecting the operations across our football club, from the academy to the senior team, from football methodology to scouting. Ladies and gentlemen, please can you do me a favor and can we all give a round of applause for the Mamelodi Sundowns new sporting development, sporting director, excuse me, <laughs> the new sporting director, Mr. Fleming Berg. <coughs> Allow me to share some background on the club's new sporting director. Fleming joins the team after holding the position of head of elite football development at the Danish Football Association for seven years. Under his tenure, we saw numerous talented Danish players emerge across the best European leagues, and he was part of the group that saw Denmark move from 46th in the FIFA World Rankings in 2016 all the way to 9th last year. During his time in the Danish FA, Fleming was responsible for the Danish national teams. He was in charge of the strategy and structure of the Danish talent development. He developed the Danish talent ID course and was responsible for the playing philosophy of Denmark. Other notable milestones in Mr. Fleming's career were the seven years that he spent as an international scout for Chelsea Football Club. During this time, he was in charge of the scouting and he was coordinated a scouting network in countries such as Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Spain, and he was a chief scout in Portugal. There are numerous other reasons why we chose to recruit Fleming for the Yellow Nation. But one of the most important reasons was because Fleming understands that Mamilodi Sundowns has a responsibility to our most important partner, the supporters. He understands that we have a responsibility to play entertaining, inspiring, and winning football. But he also understands that Mamelodi Sundowns is not only a football club. We are a football institution. And as a South African football institution, we have a duty to our country as well. Our duty is to ensure that we promote the game of football. Our duty is to make sure that we make a meaningful contribution to South African football. And it is our duty, above all, to make sure that this football club has a pool of talent and the quality of players to ensure that South Africa is a successful national team. 
This is why the key targets during Mr. F Mr. Fleming's tenure here are to focus on the club's developmental structures. Secondly, to provide leadership on talent development and football methodology. And third, to ensure that there is a clear pathway for the Mamelodi Sundowns Academy players to find a way into their first team or to find a way abroad. This is by no means an easy task, but Fleming has the full support of the board and the Mamelodi Sundowns staff as we all work together to create a football philosophy that reflects the best of our club and of our culture. From the era of Shushan and Piano, right the way through to this current crop of football that plays with passion and success. In conclusion, I'd like to say this. I see in Fleming a man who's not only excited about working for Mamelodi Sundowns Football Club. I see in Fleming a man who's excited to work in South Africa. And that is exciting. He shares the same vision as our club president and everybody in the football club, which is that Mamelodi Sundowns must be the best in Africa. And we all believe that with the men and women in our football club, this vision can and will be achieved. <coughs> Mr. Sporting Director, I don't have anything else to say except we are so excited to have you here. We are excited to share our culture with you as I know that you are excited to learn and grow with this football club. There's nothing else left to say except good luck and welcome to Bafana Bastar. <laughs> Now this is the time for for the man himself to, to tell you who he is. This is what we read about him, but he must tell us who he is. Up to you. Sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to say thank you for being here, uh, all of you, and thank you for the inspiring speech, Mr. Chairman. I will only for now say a few words, uh, first of all, because I believe in that it will be through my work that you will see my character and, um, and, um, and the things I'm going to put into the club in the coming years. Um, and secondly, uh, because I'm sure you have a lot of questions and there should be time uh, for that. I'm sure the media have thought about some uh, questions and uh, some good questions where we can get through a, a lot of different things and I will make sure there's time for that as well. It's a great honor to be here, first of all. Um, it's a great continent, it's a remarkable country and I'm very, very proud of having the opportunity to be a part of this fantastic club and to take the position as sporting director here in Mamelo de Sundowns. Um, the history and culture is in many ways overwhelming when you read about everything uh, that has gone on both here in the country and in this club in, in general. It's very, very inspiring. Um, you will all meet, now I'm coming back to, I, sh <coughs> I should say about myself, how I am, you will meet an open-minded person. I will be open to everyone, I will be open to the press, I'll be open to the coaches, I'll be open to the players, I'll be open to the staff and everyone in and around the club. That's very important for me. That's a part of, of the way I have done my work, no matter where I have been. It's with an open mind and uh, ability for everyone to be a part and to be included in, in, in the work that, that I'm doing. <coughs> I, will, um, I will be proud of being part of taking this club to new heights, being the best in Africa, being the best first team, the best ladies team, the best academy, the best on the market, um, the best everywhere. That is the vision and ambition, nothing else. That's where we're going to take this club. Um, last, before I open for the questions, I would like to say thank you to the president, to, Mr. to the chairman, to the board, and to everyone around me who have welcomed me very, very warm the times I have been here. I've been here a few times visiting, and I've only been met with warmth and open arms, and that makes me very, very happy and makes sure that we 
will have a, a great future uh, together. Um, I can't wait to meet the amazing fans of the club that I've heard so much about. I was supposed to have been here for the game Saturday where the fans were back in the stadium, but <laughs> because of my flight got cancelled, unfortunately it was not possible. I'm looking really much forward to meet uh, the fans and one thing that I can guarantee is that we will do, all of us, the best we can for the fans, for us to have victories, but played in an attractive, attacking, positive way of football that will be enjoyable for everyone in the stadium and in TV to watch. That will be our ambition. I think that's the words I will say for, for now. You will have many opportunities to ask me things uh, later in, in, in the coming, coming years. Um, but else I'm pretty much open for whatever questions you must have. Okay, this is the time for questions. It's open for questions. That's fine. <coughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to South Africa. Thank you. Welcome to Mamre Sundowns. Uh, my first question would be, when did the talks between yourself and Mamre Sundowns start? And personally, what is it that you want to achieve with this football club? I mean, they've already done well in Africa. It looks like the, the league is already a vocal conclusion. So for you, what is it that you want to achieve with Sundowns when you finally leave the club? And when did the, start, uh, the talks start with the club? Thank you. So just a moment, can you please just introduce yourself also with all the rest of this? Okay. Thanks for the question. Um, the talks started long time ago. Uh, we have been uh, through a long, long period where we have had a lot of talks and discussions on what the club was needed, what what did I look, uh, how did I look at it, and um, so the talks actually started a long time ago already uh, uh, in the middle of uh, 2021. Um, about achieving with the club, I think I said a little bit about that, about the vision and ambition we have uh, for this club. There have been some fantastic results already, you know, winning the league four years in a row, well done, uh, great job for, uh, for everyone. The ladies team winning the first Champions League. It was a pleasure for me to feel how important it was for the club and for the fans as well. Uh, fantastic achieve achievement. So the history of the club is uh, great and a lot of good things are already uh, going on. So it's not that, you know, for me, I will, my, my job will be, if you, if you look at it, you know, uh, the sporting director for me is a position where you go in and you have a lot of things around it. You have a first team, you have a ladies team, you have academy, you have a medical, you have, you have uh, a lot of different parts in the club and the sporting director's job is really to play everyone as good as possible. Being in the middle, making sure that everyone can come out with the best they have in, in themselves for the benefit of the club. That will really be, that is actually my biggest ambition, is to make sure that everyone can perform in the best possible way, being the coaches, the players, but everyone around the club and in the club. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before you ask, Question. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Lorenz from Jessica. So, obviously, the Danish football association has been there for the past four or five years, if I understand it correctly. Um, they're currently going into a global generation, and a lot of credit has gone to you for what they've achieved over the past few years. I mean, they've been targeted now as you know, contenders for even for the World Cup this year. Why would you leave Denmark to come to South Africa if Mama Lugia Sundown when they are now in the process of achieving all the you know, goals and ambitions that you've set out in the past few years? Yeah, we have, we have had a fantastic period with Denmark. Um, the last, I, I started there seven years ago and and one of the things that we, we started from the beginning was building a strong relationship with all the stakeholders within the country, the uh, between the federation, between the clubs, between the media, uh, between all the different stakeholders in the club. And we have done really, really well on that. And it's important for me that 
I say we, I know that I've, um, in the media, that, you know, I've been giving a lot of credit for it, but we, we are so many people working hard on this, you know, the, the coaches, the youth coaches, the senior coaches, the management, everyone around it. So I feel I leave the Danish Federation on a fantastic platform where we can grow, the Danish Federation can grow even more. Uh, but for me, it's a, it's a, the timing is really, really good. Um, because I, I feel that now the platform is there, so now it's to take advantage of it, bringing more things into the Danish Federation, and I'm sure that they will do very, very good in the future, because one thing, I, a fantastic question, and I really like that you have done your research on it, but it's not a golden generation. We have many generations to come, and we are going to, to be able to compete on the highest level uh, for, for a lot of years in, in, in Denmark to come. So for me, the timing was actually very good. And when I was uh, contacted by, by, by the chairman and the senior management around uh, Mamelodi Sundowns and started looking into to the club and the possibilities here, it was for me an opportunity where, where I could see, okay, I can, here I can come and, and, and make a difference for, for the club and for South African football in, uh, in, in general. And it was, just, it was just so intriguing for me. It was a fantastic opportunity and, uh, and that we could make it happen made me so proud and, and, and happy. So I think the timing is just right. Um, and I like that I walk out the front door and I come in here out in, uh, in, on the front door where a club is doing really, really well. Uh, I think the timing is actually excellent. You should not wait doing good things until bad things happen. That's really... Uh, okay, so next question. The chairman is also here. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we have Thank two questions there. Uh, my question is to the chairman. Um, we've seen uh, it's the modern trend in football is to have sporting directors and this is the first in South African football, this first annual. Uh, you see an example like a club like Manchester United. People are saying, you have an accountant who's here and they need a sporting director. That's what the club is doing there. What was so important for the club to get a sporting director but when the club is doing so well, when the club looks um, swimming trophies, the club is um, the lead team swimming trophies? What was important for the club to get a sporting director in this particular period? Well, first of all, thank you for your question. Um, and I think if I can take this opportunity to, you know, Fleming was speaking about the Danish FA. I think it's important to also thank the Danish FA for being so, you know, gracious in our negotiations and allowing Fleming to go with goodwill. Uh, I, I think that's, that's a very positive statement and a, and a good way to start a, a proper long-term relationship. But to your question around why, why now and um, why sporting director, it's, it's quite frankly because in the past we did, we did look for the role of sporting director. Unfortunately, the one sporting director we had, um, Eric Hein, uh, he left to go play in Iceland. He was offered a job for the Icelandic uh, national team, so he went to go coach. And as we know, our previous sporting director, Jose Alashenko, had family issues in 2020 and he had to leave. Um, the, the role is very important for a growing football club because we need an individual to, as Fleming has said, play a role of combining and connecting the different operations of a football club. We want to be able to look back in 10 years time at an era where Mamelodi Sundowns had a successful first team that's led by successful first team coaches who are driven and apply a different philosophy of football. Um, and we have a ladies team that has a different philosophy of football, but we need to make sure that there's a blueprint that all this football methodology is combined, put together in a structured way so that the club has a long-term future and the goal of continuing the success and is a model for those who come after us to say this is the Mamelodi Sundowns way, this is Mamelodi Sundowns football philosophy and, and, and that's important for us. In addition to that, I think uh, as we've mentioned, you know, it is a global practice, it's something that's happening all over the world. And, and as a football club, we want to be a global team, globally competitive, and it's about introducing an individual who can come here and, as Fleming has said, encourage different individuals to, to reach their full potential. So we're all very excited about the new addition.
Thank you. Next. Thank you so much. <coughs> Tim Bashavarada, Joseph from Sports. Um, Mr. Fleming, I'm, I'm just curious about your ideal type of a player, the profile of a player that we expect you to build um, in, in South Africa with sundowns. What, what is it that you want to achieve? Maybe the type of a player that you're looking at, the age, you know, the build and all of that, seeing that all players are not be largely built like some of the players you find in Europe. And uh, uh, on, on, on that, just, just give us the picture. And on the uh, Chelsea, with the program that you've been with the rest of your crew, do you mind dropping some names that probably came through the right? Sure, I will do both. Um, first, around what type of player, it's very depending, of course, on position and, uh, and, the, and the playing style defined by, by the club and, and, and the coaches. One thing that comes in mind for me about, uh, especially around uh, young players and where I think they are very, very good um, nowadays, uh, it's on decision making. As the main uh, reason for a player to break through is his ability to read the game, understand the game, do the right things in the different uh, situations. That's not only for young players, but for young players in particular, that's where they are getting better and better and better because the football gets more and more structured. Um, so because of that, you need to be able to read and understand the different situations. So decision making is for me a, a, a very vital part of it. But then there's other positions where you also need other characteristics. Uh, some can be physical, some can be mental. Um, but in general, I think decision making from the goalkeeper all the way up to the strikers are very, is very, very important in modern football. So that's, um, you know, for me, a, a very important thing about that. About my time in Chelsea, I was there for seven years. It was a fantastic time. I was there from 2005 to 2012. Um, I saw Benny McCarthy playing in FC Porto many times uh, because I was following FC Porto. We brought in Bosingwe from Porto. Um, I was responsible for mainly for Portugal and Spain, you know, the Iberia uh, uh, island. And then I had a, a period responsible for creating a scouting network in, in South America. But we brought in Bosingwe as one of the more notable players. It was a big success, played almost every game in Chelsea. We also paid quite a lot of money for him, so we also expected to, but he did well. We brought in another player we brought in in my time from Portugal was David Luiz, um, central defender, modern central defender, quick, strong, uh, good in the air, played with both feet. Uh, actually, for Benfica, even he was right-footed. You know, he played left left full back uh, because he always also had a very good left foot. So a very modern central defender, ability to press forward, to break uh, in front of the attackers and, and, and because of that uh, starting some very good counter attacks. Uh, that was two of the most notable players and also two of the most expensive players we, we brought in in, in in my time in, in Chelsea. Besides that, I was crossover scouting as well. Crossover scouting is when other scouts find players, then you go out, you know, we bring in a few few eyes, so we never really brought in a player on on, on, on one scout's eyes. There was always several uh, involved in that, so I was really heavy involved in the crossover scouting as, as well. And a very successful time with winning the Champions League, two Premier Leagues, two FA Cups, the League Cup. Um, it was a fantastic time uh, I had there in, in Chelsea from 2005 to 2012. Thank you. Let's give you a chance. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is for the chairman and, and, and the new man as well. And chairman, I'll start with you. Uh, already, the club is doing well. I think one of my colleagues has said that. Uh, in this position of you bringing the new sports and technical director, how important or did you speak to the three wise men already at the house? Uh, because obviously, you know, things are going well. So did you include them in these, you know, possibilities or now possibility of bringing the, the new man? And how important were they? And uh, to the new men as well, what do you know about these three coaches that have been well over the last couple of seasons? Thank you. Uh, well, to your point, um, we did have very, very early stage discussions with our coaches about the, the position. Uh, I kept them in my confidence. Uh, I spoke to them individually about this decision. And I think for them, they understood because I did reason with them and I said, you know, our, our club needs to take this this new direction where there is this um, connected role in, that a person is playing for many reasons. 
and I was very pleased to know that you know our, our coaches you call them the three wise men our coaches are students of this game you know our coaches are footballing academics uh, bar none and the discussions and the way they welcome exchanges and, and knowledge and different practices of the game it's it's really a feast you know those who are able to listen to these discussions are really spoiled so in that case I think it was something that they also understood uh, being forward-thinking leaders that uh, we always can improve and they understood that this was an important step for the football club. Um, and I will say that, as I said before, I've, I've, I've watched all the games, uh, I've watched a lot of interviews, I've watched a lot of things uh, from, from the coaches and I'm looking so much forward to, to meet with them, to talk football and talk about visions and talk about strategy and talk about um, uh, decisions and um, and how they are they are working with uh, with the players. Um, I also, of course, looked into the background, and I'm really happy with the also the academic approach to it and the interest of the game. I myself have a, a, a science degree from the Copenhagen University in sports and science, and and have interest in in that part of the football game as well. Um, so I can't wait to go into these talks and discussions. Um, I'm sure it will be very rewarding for, for all of us. Okay, you all know that there will be one-on-one. -on -one. <coughs> okay. Okay. Chairman, did you given me that uh, the new sporting director might not be familiar as yet with the profile of, of the South African players in the scouting and which in South Africa, would you be given the <coughs> to have an input? I mean, I'm asking that question because in about two months or so, the transfer window will be going to be a lot of If he has to have input, he has to obviously understand it. I'm sorry, Mazola. When you were asking the question, uh, we just had a few coughs in the audience. Could you just repeat that? And, and no, no worries for those who are coughing. Um, you must you must feel comfortable. But can you just repeat that question for me, please, Mazola? Oh, the question. Yeah, I, I didn't hear. I'm oh, sorry. sorry, sorry about that. I'm asking whether the, the new sporting director will yeah. have an input in uh, in, in, in the recruitment of, of players across the board, senior team, women's team, or, or the academy, because he's just arrived and might not yet have the, an, maybe an understanding of the profile of yeah. the South African player if you are recruiting in, 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 in the country. No, of course. Okay. So, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that our head scout is here, Ezra Nyandoro. He will tell you that at our football club, and in the scouting department in particular, there's a, there's a team of individuals that go out and identify talent across the continent, across the globe, right? And they have an input, and they speak to a committee that then obviously takes this input and makes decisions around the transfer policy. Uh, the coaches have a very important input um, in that whole process of identifying and speaking to players. And I think that they would welcome, the whole committee would welcome the input of someone like Fleming, because although, yes, you, you, you are correct, there may be certain instances where uh, he might not be very familiar with, with all the players. One thing that we know is that uh, we attract and we look for the best court players in the world. So there will be players, perhaps, that have uh, an understanding of what we need in the club, and they may not be South African at the same time, those South African players that we identify will be happy to you know, ask for his input, and I'm sure he'll be able to provide a lot of uh, insightful you know, points on the players. But he's going to have an input in, in these decisions going forward, yes.